In this video, I will demonstrate how to do the Z test to sample for means tool. Now, this tool will compute a Z value between two means when the population variances are known. So, in this case, we have cholesterol measures for males and females, and we want to compare them to see if they're significantly different. We have the population variance for female cholesterol level, and we have the population variance for male cholesterol level. So in order to perform this group comparison, we want to go to the data tab and then go to the data analysis tool. And in our menu, we want to find the z-test to sample for means, highlight that, and then click OK. Now the first step is to indicate uh, the data range for variable 1. So we want to click the ref edit button and we want to highlight the data for our first variable, including the label at the top of the column, and click the ref edit button. And we do that for our second group of data, in this case the male data. And we perform the same function, click the ref edit button. And then we next need to enter in the variance for each of our variables. So in this case, I know that the variance for female is 2136, so I enter that into variable number one. For male, it's 1794, I enter that into variable number two. Now, if I don't know the population variance for my two groups, then I would not use a z-test. I would use a t-test, which I will show in a, a different video. Now, the next thing we need to do is click the button for labels, and that will label uh, each of our variables for us in our output table. And then we choose the alpha level at which we wish to test the null hypothesis. In this case, we're using the, the p less than 0.05 alpha level. And so this test is going to tell us if there is a statistically significant difference between these two groups of data. We next need to indicate the output range, so where we want our output table to be placed. We're going to put it here at F2. We click our Ref Edit button, and then we click OK. And so here is our data table. Now we can expand this column so it's a little easier to read what's in each column. So here's the mean cholesterol level for the female group and for the male group. And here's our known variances. Now our, our hypothesized mean using a null hypothesis assumes that there will be zero difference between the two means and so that's why we see a zero there for our hypothesized mean difference. The next row is the actual Z value. In this case 0 0.80 and we can see the p-value for a one-tailed as well as for a two-tailed test, and we see the critical value needed to reject the null hypothesis for a one-tail and two-tailed test. Now, assuming we were doing a two-tailed test, we would need our z-score to exceed 1.959 or 1.96. In this case, we do not exceed that, and we can see that matches up with a p-value of 0.41, and that is not less than 0.05. So in this case, we would accept the null hypothesis and say that there is no significant difference between male and female cholesterol levels. Now, if this p-value would have been uh, less than 0.05, then we would be able to reject the null hypothesis and say that there is a significant difference between male and female cholesterol levels. So hopefully you've learned something from this video, and good luck using this technique on your own.